Hi friends, warm welcome to my channel. I am Lavshar Chengodan. This video is designed to discuss a very important topic that are there any differences between economics and economy. Do you believe both are same? In my previous videos, I have suggested one important thing that for competitive exams, you should focus on economy and not economics. So, we can make a detailed discussion on economics and economy, okay? Let us start with a question, what is economics? You know, the renowned classical economist Adam Smith has defined economics as the science of wealth. According to Smith's economics makes studies about production and consumption of wealth. You know, the term economics is derived from the Greek word oikonomics which means household management. We can say that economics is dealing with the economic behavior of human beings as producer, investor, consumer, distributor and so on. The British economist Lionel Robbins described the discipline economics as the science of scarcity. We know that in the modern era, human wants are not only unlimited but also enlarging day by day and the resources are scarce and diminishing day by day. In this context, the application of economic theories is vital to trace out amicable or viable solutions to central problems faced by all nations, that is, you know, what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. My point is that economizing the resources is an important aspect of economics. By economizing resources, we mean making the best use of the available resources. The need of the need of the hour is that ensure optimum utilization of the available resources, that is natural, man-made and human resources and minimize the wastages of both renewable and non-renewable resources. Alfred Marshall one of the greatest economists of 19th century and founders of neoclassical economics states that economics is a study of man's actions in the ordinary business of life. It enjoys how he gets his income and how he uses it. Thus, it is on one side a study of wealth and on the other and more important side a part of the study of man. Joseph Stiglitz, you know, a world-renowned American economist and he is a recipient of the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Science in 2001. Stiglitz states that economics studies how individuals, firms, government and other organizations within our society make choices and how these choices determine society's use of its resources. We know that microeconomics and macroeconomics are the two main branches of economics. Microeconomics is based on the economic behavior of small economic units. That is, microeconomics is the study of particular firms, particular households, individual prices, wages, incomes, individual industries, particular commodities and so on. That is, the key word here is that small economic units that will come under microeconomics. Actually, the techniques of microeconomics were popularized largely by Adam Smith. Then, what is macroeconomics? We can say that Macroeconomics is the study of the behavior of the economy as a whole. It covers variables like total employment, total savings, aggregate demand, general price level, national income, etc. In this regard, the key word is aggregate level or macroeconomy takes economy as a whole. You can note one point here is that this branch was developed largely by the efforts of 
ജോൺ മെനാർഡ് കെയിൻസ് ലെറ്റ് എസ് മേക്ക് എ സിമ്പിൾ ഡിസ്കഷൻ ഓൺ മൈക്രോ ആൻഡ് മൈക്രോ എക്കണോമിക് വേരിയബിൾസ് വി ക്യാൻ ടേക്ക് ഫിഫ്റ്റി കിലോഗ്രാം റൈസ് ഡിമാൻഡ് ബൈ അരവിൻസ് മൈ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഇറ്റ് മൈക്രോ ക്യാൻ യു ആൻസർ of course it is micro as it is individual demand of a particular good another one what about the level of employment in tata industry is it macro the answer is no it is also come under microeconomics as it is about a employment of a particular industry and not national level employment or unemployment Next, we can consider the level of employment in India. Is it macro? Yes, of course, it is macro as it is based on aggregate level employment in a country. Let us solve a simple question. What is the question? See, which of the following is a microeconomic statement? See the options. Option A, the real domestic output increased by 10% last year. Option B the general unemployment rate is 6% option C the price of rice declined last year option D the general price level increased by 7% last year you know the right answer is C option C we can take other options C like options A B and D are macroeconomic variables that is option c is microeconomic statement as it considers the price movement of rice only and not the general price level so far we have discussed economics yeah let us examine the meaning of economy as we have stated earlier the basic nature of any economy lies in the scarcity of its productive resources in relation to its wants our wants are ever increasing and recurring while availability of resources for satisfying them lags behind an economy is constantly engaged in the solution of this eternal problem of scarcity of course economics is one of the leading branches of social science which includes theories postulates and techniques please make a clarity in your understanding that the economy is the area or place where we apply the theories ideas and the techniques of economics simply we can say the relation between economics and the economy is that of theory and the practice that is economy is the place or region where frame picture of economic theories this region is defined as a country for example the american economy is in recession we can see economies like indian economy brazilian economy or even denoted as state economy like kerala economy rajasthan economy or local economy to digest these points very easily i would like to add an incident to discuss the concepts like economics and economy some years back i have noticed the election manifesto of political parties of two nations India and Japan in the election manifesto designed by various political parties in India guaranteed to people that if you elect us we will take actions to reduce inflationary pressures in the country interestingly the election manifesto framed by major political parties in Japan highlighted that dear citizens of Japan if you elect us we will bring inflation to Japanese economy my point is that economic problems are different in different countries that is india's problem was inflation but in japan the serious problem was deflation or economic crisis similarly we can take an economic policy say fiscal stimulus packages adopted by both the us president donald trump and nirmala sitharaman the union finance minister of india both nations drastically reduced corporate tax to boost economic activities and speed up recovery from economic slowdown my argument is that both nations used the same economic doctrine or policy but the result may be different from country to country that is economics is same but economies are different their outcomes are different now we can discuss some facts adam smith 
is regarded as the father of economics his great book entitled an inquiry into the nature and causes of wealth of nations you know it is popularly known as wealth of nations published in the year 1776 john maynard keynes great work titled the general theory of employment interest and money published in 1926 he is regarded as the father of macroeconomics The drastic changes in the economic analysis resulted in the development of macroeconomics are popularly described as Keynesian revolution or new economics. You know, who is the father of Indian economy? Yeah, Dada Bhai Navaroji is the father of Indian economics. Navaroji's famous book entitled Poverty and Un-British Rule in India which was first published in 1901 and revised in 1911. Also not one factual information from ancient Indian economic thought that the famous work entitled Arthashastra published by Kaudilya who was the teacher and the key advisor of Emperor Chandragupta Maurya founder of the Mauryan Empire you know Kaudilya was popularly known as Chanakya let us solve a few model questions question number 1 a closed economy is an economy in which option the money supply is fully controlled option b deficit financing takes place option c only exports take place option d neither exports nor imports take place you know the right answer is option d that is closed economy represents an isolated economy and there is no active trade with the rest of the world it is the just opposite of open economy We can consider another model question based on a great philosopher, sociologist and economist Karl Hendrik Marx. Question is that Karl Marx explained the process of class struggle with the help of which one of the following theories. Option A, empirical liberalism, option B, existentialism, option C, Darwin's theory of evolution, option D, dialectical materialism. You know the right answer. Dialectical materialism is the correct option. Next question is that the term marginal standing facility that is MSF and net demand and time liabilities sometimes appearing in news are used in relation to option A banking operations that is the right answer that is you know banking operations like MSF is one of the quantitative credit control techniques or monetary policy tools of RBI let us consider economic concepts related questions If the interest rate is decreased in an economy it will option A decrease the consumption expenditure in the economy option B increase the tax collection of the government option C increase the investment expenditure in the economy option D increase the total savings in the economy you just understand that there is an inverse or negative relationship between investment and interest rate the point is that interest rate is the cost of rising capital for investment there will be lower investment expenditure during high rate of interest and vice versa so the right option is c now we can consider another question that is the main objective of the 12th five year plan is the right option is d faster sustainable and more inclusive growth The government of India has established Niti Aayog you know national institution for transforming India to replace the correct option is D that is planning commission let us conclude our discussion with a question that is what is the role of economics in an economy like India my perspective is that economics perform four vital role in an economy that is the first role is that to understand the problems or developmental issues of an economy like poverty or unemployment then next step is that to trace out the magnitude or extent of the problems for example level and nature of poverty or unemployment third one is that to frame economic policies to combat the issues like monetary policy or fiscal policy the final job of economics in an economy is that to make a holistic evaluation or assessment of the policies or programs like five year plans or mgnrg and so on this step is essential to understand the gap between targets and real achievements of particular policy or program 
you know the importance of updation of material you must give importance to current economy for example the nobel prize for economics in 2019 or new programs like pm kisan or mudra yojana and so on can you say the name of persons who got nobel prize for economics in the year 2019 this topic is very important because abhijit banerji one of the nobel prize winners in economics has some connections with india that is abhijit vinayak banerji is an indian born american economist who with esther deflo and michael kramer was awarded the 2019 nobel prize for economics for their experimental research on poverty and they developed tools for alleviating global poverty their experimental work has changed the culture of economics especially development economics they set up poverty alleviating lab for their study another fact is that 2019 is the golden jubilee year of nobel prize for economics you know it was first awarded in 1969 Another interesting fact is that Abhijit Banerjee and his wife Esther Deflo is the first couple to receive the Nobel Prize in Economics. Esther Deflo is the second woman who got Nobel Prize in Economics. You know Eleanor Ostrom was the first lady who got Nobel Prize in Economics in 2009. Also refer to Amartya Kumar Sen who was the first person from Asian continent received Nobel Prize in Economics in 1998 for his massive contributions in the field of welfare economics. In 1999 Indian government honored AK Sen by presenting Bharat Ratna the highest civilian award in India. Dear friends you can subscribe my YouTube channel Naushad Changodan. I will upload next video on hot topics like economic slowdown, recession and depression. I am expecting some questions from this topic. You know our economy is currently facing economic slowdown and but not recession or depression. This video will make a clear cut clarity about a question that is what are the major differences between economic slowdown, recession and depression. Okay, you can also visit to my website nowshedchengodan.in. Okay, thank you.